Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another review. Today I'm continuing with the theme of the devilish haul that I made. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check it out. I have a link for you down in the description box and probably somewhere here above my head. And today I'll be talking about The Watcher in the Shadows. Yeah, okay. The Watcher in the Shadows by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, the renowned author of The Shadow of the Wind, which I really, really loved. I also read another book by him, The Angel's Game, which is actually a prequel to Shadow of the Wind. I wasn't too crazy about this book. I didn't think it was very, very good. But still, I decided to give a chance to The Watcher in the Shadows. So The Watcher in the Shadows takes place in the 40s in France and follows the Souvel family. I really hope I'm pronouncing it right. I just cannot read French. I never know which letters to actually pronounce. But anyway, the Souvel family, especially the older daughter, Irene, who is 14 years old, and they move from the city to a little beach town in France where the mother can start her new job as a housekeeper for a retired old toy maker who lives in a house with a lot of abandoned mechanical toys, which is never scary. Anyway, things really start looking up for them until some really creepy, mysterious things happen. I will get right into that. I adore this book. I had so much fun reading it. I thought it was really great. If you've been following me, you know that lately I've been reading books that I really didn't like. Some of them were okay, some I just ranted about how much I hated them, and I'm really, really glad that I read something good at last. I am also very glad that I read the intro to this book, so I know that this book was aimed at young adults. I do think that people who are getting into this book should know that if the size and the size of the font doesn't uh, give it up. This book has Safon's signature all over it, from the very creepy dark atmosphere to the storyline of the doomed lovers from the past and the new hopeful lovers from the present and you know the new lovers have to learn something from the story from the past in order for their relationship not to be doomed, setting in the early 20th century, an element of fairy tales and urban legends, although unlike Shadow of the Wind, which has only very magical atmosphere, here the genre is actually fantasy. We also have the element of story within a story, something told through letters or diaries, and overall a very very cool book. This guy can definitely create a creepy atmosphere and a creepy storyline, which is also a good and a bad thing in this book. This book is definitely atmosphere-based as opposed to character-based, which makes the characters not so deep. They're not terrible. And, you know, if I would have met Irene in real life, I'm pretty sure that I would really like her, maybe would, would have become friends. But other than that, all the characters felt a little toned down, which is the overall problem with this book. I really, really loved it, but I do think that the big issue about this book can be summarized in, you know, one problem, which is the fact that it feels like that in order to make it for young adults, everything in his book is kind of toned down or even sometimes dumbed down. This book isn't stupid, but I did get the feeling that maybe he had an idea for something for adults and then he tried to do it for teenagers, so he had to kind of reduce everything kind of including characters. Once again, this is not a stupid book. It's really important for me to say it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great, but everything seems to be toned down, including the characters. All the characters are really nice. You know, Irene is a very nice person. Her mother is a very nice person. I think her mother is probably my favorite character in this book, although she's a lot more forgiving than any mother would probably be in this situation. But this is also the problem. So they move to this new place and they meet new people and you would expect some of these people to be really nice, some of them be like not really caring, but you don't even have a nasty person there. The villain here is some sort of an evil spirit that you kind of get to hear about and only at the very end you realize what it is. But other than that, everyone is just nice. You don't even have a school bully there. You don't even have a nosy gossip lover that kind of pushes her or his nose to other people's business. 
everyone are just nice. Which sounds very nice in reality. I would love to live around only nice people, but you know, it's not very realistic, first of all. And secondly, it kind of uh, eliminates a lot of potential conflicts. And there are conflicts there, but like I said before, I just felt that everything was just toned down in order to fit for a younger audience. Like one of the things that really bothered me was the relationship between Irene and her younger brother Dorian, which pretty much didn't exist. I mean, we have no idea if there are one of those uh, siblings that always fight, that they are very jealous of each other, that they really love each other and very close. We have no idea. They just don't communicate. And I think that Safon is really good in creating romantic relationships or telling us about very lonely characters. Any sort of other kind of uh, interaction or relationship either don't really exist or they look very... Mm, fake. Another strange thing in this book, since I'm here talking about things I didn't really like about this book, is that, uh, like I said, you have this element of a story within a story, which you did in other books, and sometimes you'll have a character telling another character a story, but sometimes it was just really in the wrong place. There was one time where an adult tried to calm down a scared kid, and he started telling him this really scary urban legend. I mean, really, I get that it was important for this character to tell the other character the story and it was important for us as readers also to hear the story, but seriously, what are you trying to do? You try to calm down this kid by telling him probably the scariest thing ever. Another part comes, and I thought it was very funny in a bit of an ironic way. So the villain captures one of the main characters and he says, we don't have a lot of time, so I will just tell you the story very shortly. And first of all, okay, thank you for taking the time for telling us a story. But secondly, the story takes like 10 pages and he tells her all the, the truth behind uh, why is he there and why he's doing the thing that he's doing. I mean, it's such a convenient way for us to find out the story behind the villain. Thank you for taking your time to explain everything in great detail, even though you don't have a lot of time. So to conclude, I told you what I didn't like about this book, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed it. I really, really recommend it, especially if you want to maybe read a book for young adults that doesn't have all of those very, very annoying cliche tropes that usually modern young adult books have. Safon wrote that he wants the experience of reading this book to be like the experience that kids used to have in olden days of reading Alexander Dumas and Victor Hugo, you know, at times where kids actually read adult books. Um, I'm not sure if I can compare this book to The Three Musketeers or The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but still it was very good, very eerie, very creepy without being gory. That's a really good thing. I mentioned before, and I'm sorry for repeating myself, but I do think that sometimes authors get confused between a creepy, scary atmosphere and uh, disgust. They just put tons of violence and blood and also sex in their books in order to make everything very scary and edgy, and they actually lack a very good base of a creepy atmosphere, and here it's the exact opposite. You have a very, very good creepy atmosphere with some gory things very very minor things but the atmosphere it really what matters in this book unfortunately because of that you have a little less of characters but they still i really like the characters even though they were really nice and that's it for my review thank you guys for watching i really hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to click like to show it and to subscribe to my channel if you dare for more videos in the theme of the devilish hall and you know some other book related videos and before i go i want to ask you first of all if you have read this book what did you think about it did you like it did you dislike it and why and also write down in the comment section which young adult books you recommend which one of them are really good and kind of lack those uh, annoying tropes that are really really cliche that we see everywhere so thank you again for watching and i'll see you again next time Bye-bye.